Sherling products. This video will cover loading programs onto the Sherling controller, um, doing s small program editing, and conversational programs. Once you've loaded your software, it's loaded onto the controller, and that's the part that homes out your machine, comes up with all the screens, has the, all the settings in it. For your programs, all of your programs are on the flash drive. Right now I've clicked on the load program right here, which is F6, and it shows all the programs that are on my flash drive right now. If I remove the flash drive, all the programs are gone, and it'll say flash drive is not uh, inserted. If I put it back in, all my programs are there. Also, if you've uh, changed any settings at all, all of your new settings uh, can also be saved on your flash drive, so every time you use it, it's got current settings on it. For the programs, if you look at the page right here, it has uh, programs that are .nc and it has programs that are .wiz. The WIZ programs are from the conversational programs that we set up. So as an example, if I click on cup holder circle WIZ and I hit load, what is loaded is the actual conversational program. So if I want to go in here and edit any of this, it's got the name up here, date, it's got the uh, G-code program name. If I go to the, it's just using one tool, if I go to this tool and I double click on it, here are all my parameters. So if I want to change my depth of cut, do two shallow cuts instead of one deep cut. If I want to change my spindle RPM, my cutting feed rate, my Z feed rate, my Z clearance, any of these right here I can change and then save again. Save. Then I have to sit, hit save wizard and it'll show that the wizard is saved right here. And then I hit post G code and it'll show you the percentages here. When it gets to 100% it'll show 100% saved. Now I can go back to load. So if I actually want to run this program then it's going to be the cup holder circle pocket dot nc if i click on that and i hit load program it actually loads the cutter path for that program onto the screen i'm going to turn off my power to my drives right now because i don't want to actually run the machine there's no power to my stepper motors right now if i go to the program page first i have to hit rewind and then i hit cycle start so right now the spindle is going to come on and once it gets to the correct RPMs, you can see that the Z axis is now moving down to a clearance point. As soon as it gets to the clearance point, then you're going to see the X and Y axis move to the first cutting position. As soon as it gets close enough, right now you can see the actual center line of the tool crosshair is moving. It's feeding down to the Z 50 thousandths right here and now it's going to start generating the spiral cut to cut the circular pocket out. I like the, uh, the pattern that it does. It comes around and after it does a full circle then it generates on an arc out into the next circular cut. This is a lot easier on your machine. On some other software it'll get to a point right here and it'll step straight out and make the next cut. That straight out move is really hard on, on any machine that you have. It's hard on our machine, but it's hard on any machine. So as long as you have a constant spiral cut going from one diameter to the next, the cutting's a lot smoother. It's a lot, lo lot less torque on your, your cutter. You don't get chatter. When it moves straight out, it stops and hesitates and then moves. You get chatter every time the end mill stops. So this pattern for doing a circular pocket is really nice. Let's say right now my cut, and I'll show you this when we cut the part, say right about now, it's uh, I'm getting material build up, the whole pocket's filling up with chips, and chips are starting to get back into the cut. I just hit feed hold, 
you can either hit feed hold there or I can hit the escape button on my keypad and it does the same thing. Because of the software that's in this program, right now I can go to the jog page and go to continuous and I can actually move the z-axis. Right now I'm moving the z-axis up, I'll go up like two inches. So that's 2.4 above the part. I can go over and blow out all the chips, uh, add oil to it. If my cutter's getting dull or it's getting clogged up, I can change my cutter out if I wanted to. But for the most part, I can move it to anywhere I want. Clearance in the Z, X, Y, can move it entirely out. Actually, if I go plus on the X, you'll see it's moving out on the X. And I'm gonna go plus on the Y. Plus on the Y and we'll move to a clearance point. I clean it all off. Now if I go back to program, if I just hit cycle start right here, it's moving over in the X to where it last was. I have to hit cycle start again. Now it's going to move down into the Y to where it stopped at. I hit it one more time and now it's coming down to the Z axis. As soon as it gets down to the bottom where it should be on the z-axis, it will continue making the cut. It doesn't miss a beat. This is something that other controllers don't offer at all. Another way I can do this, if I hit feed hold right there, and again I jog out on continuous, and jog it up in the z, and jog, it, jog it over in the x, jog it up in the y, it's cleared out of my area. If I go back to the program now, and I can go to uh, jump to a line. Okay, it's going to show the last line it was at right here. It was on line 25. And let me get out of this. When it's counting lines, it's counting each line and it's also counting spaces. So you have to actually count through your program to know what line you want to start at if you want to start someplace other than where you left off. But if I go to jump to line right now, it'll say line 25, and I can hit start from here. It'll tell me the moves it's going to make right now. Machine move X position, machine move Y position, machine move Z position. It'll show the feed rate, which is at 14 inches a minute. Tool number two, what the tool was. Spindle clockwise at 2,000 RPMs. So it shows each step it's going to make and also what all the settings are. I click run. And I hit cycle start. Okay, he's coming down to the Z right now. The spindle's coming on. So right now it's moving over. Moving down. Moving to the finish point in the, or to the cut point in the Z. And it continues on with its cut. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to kick rewind MDI. I'm going to turn off my spindle. Actually, I can do that here and spin the lock. Another one, this uh, controller, it's set up so that you can actually edit short programs. Anything that's too long, it's going to tell you that the program's too long and you'll have to edit that on your CAD CAM software. But if I pick out a short program, let's see what we have. This is an outside profile program. I'm going to program, click up here, and go control E. I hit control E, I click on the program, I hit control E, and my editing page comes up over here. One of the things a conversational program does is it will come all the way down to the Z axis first, and then it will move in the X and Y. Whether you're running the lathe or the mill, this, uh, this could be a crash scenario right here. For example, if I'm on my mill and I bring my end mill down, it comes straight down where it is here, and then it moves over. 
I end up cutting right through my hold down clamps or holding the part down. So one of the edits I do on this is I will actually move it to the, I'll, I'll, put, I'll get rid of this part right here. Just backspace out of it. So it's gonna go GOO to my XY position first. Then I'm gonna go G, G O Z. 0 0.050. So it's going to go to 50 thousandths. Now it's going to move to the X and Y position. Then it's going to come down 50 thousandths above. And then the next move is going to be Z0. If I want to come in here and change, uh, let's say my feed rates, I can override my feed rates. I can't make them go faster than 100%, but I can bring them down lower than that. So if I want to see how fast I can really push this, I'm going to double all my feed rates on here. So that's at five inches a minute. I'm going to change it to 10. This one's 10. I'm going to change it to 20. And we'll cursor down to see where else. Okay, so we have five again here. 10, change this one here to 20. Okay, cursor down some more. The other one is as I edit these, it's actually being edited and saved on the flash drive. So any edits I do, whatever's on my flash drive will be an, an edited, updated program. All right, one more. There's the end of my program, I'm gonna hit save. exit. Right now, I'm going to go to load program again. That is my NC. All right, now if I go to the program, my feed rates and my um, positions have been changed. So right now I'm going to go rewind and cycle start. Spindle goes on. You see it's going over to the start point. It goes there first, and now it's coming down to the Z. So that's one of the changes I made. Now the feed rate on this. You have F11. If I push F11, and then I can either push my minus or plus buttons that will either increase or decrease the percentage of feed rate. So I'm at 79%, 83, 89, at 100%, it's at 20 inches a minute. So again, that's too fast for what I'm gonna cut, so I'm gonna bring my feed rate down to 50%, 49%, and now it's cutting what it was originally programmed to cut at. If I think I can go faster, I can hit it up 11 and just increase it a little bit and then just make a note of it that you know, it, it was doing fine at 11 inches a minute, maybe it was doing fine at 12 inches a minute. And then I alter my program so I'm getting optimum feeds and speeds. So right now I'm gonna put it up to 100%. The same thing can go with the spindle if I hit F12 and I hit minus. You can hear my RPMs dropping. I'm at 70%, which is 1974. Okay, I go back up to 100%. Where this comes in handy is if you're, uh, if you're having chatter problems, you get rid of chatter either by increasing the feed rate or decreasing the RPMs of your spindle. Uh, if your cutter's sticking out too far or you went from a stubby one to a long, longer flute cutter, a lot of times you have to drop the RPMs to get rid of chatter. So being able to override it on the fly like this is pretty good. For this one I'm going to hit feed hold. And I'm going to turn my spindle off, rewind. So we just went over another program, how to change your RPM and your feed rate on the fly. If I pick out a, a longer program, this one's doing the engraving. So this is a pretty long program. If I go to program and I click on it, 
and I want to edit it, so I go Control E. What I'm going to get is this right here where it says error, file too big to load for editing. Anytime the file's too big to be edited, you're just going to get that message right there, which means that you're going to have to take your flash drive and actually edit it on your laptop or your, your PC, whatever you're using to actually generate your programs. So I'm going to escape. As far as running programs, if I, like this cup holder for instance, I've got it doing a, a facing operation, I have it doing cutting a circular pocket out, I then have it going in and doing the engraving program, and I have it doing a profile cut on the outside. So that's four programs, well, four different operations. You can either program it as one long program, uh, but a lot of times what I find is that it's a lot easier if you break it down into short individual programs for each operation. That way you can walk through that program, you can optimize it, change your RPMs, your feed rates, get it cutting the way you want it to cut for a better finish or better accuracy. And then you just go from one process to the next. Also, if these are, if these are short programs, a lot of the times, like this one's doing a profile, if I go to program, click on it, control E, okay, even that one's too long. Some of these programs will be short enough where you can edit them right here on the screen. If you have a real long program, you're not going to be do, able to do any edits at all. So this one's longer than I can edit also. But as you, if you go through it like so, and I've got this one marked uh, ball screw test cut, profile only, okay, the next one I've got, uh, engraving, I've got uh, a circle pocket, I've got facing operation, so I would mark it as cup holder, facing operation one, cup holder, circular pocket two, and you can just walk down, just call up one program after the other. Once you have it all dialed in, then you can take all those programs, just cut and paste them into one program, and you're up and flying, you've got one program to run it all. Some of the other options you have on your program screen, this program's loaded, it shows you the shape that the, the cutter path is going to take. We have single block, we have go to work origin, we have jump to line, and then down here you've got cycle start, feed hold, and rewind. Anytime you're running a program, you're going to go rewind. If I go to single block and I start running my program, it's going to go down one block at a time. You can see where it's going here. Spindle comes on, and this is so I can step through my program. So it's going one block at a time. Right now it's moving out to the start position for the cut. It's going to come down to the Z axis. And then it starts, it's going to do a, a radius cut into the side of the part to do a profile around the outside. Most of the single block's going to happen when you're getting to the point where you're entering the part to make sure that you're not going to crash anything. And if anything happens, again, you have feed hold right here, or you have the escape button on your keypad to start it again, you just hit cycle start again. I'm going to go feed hold, I'm going to turn single block off, and then go to cycle start, and now it's just going to continue on, I'm out of the single block mode. I have to hit it one more time, there we go, and now it's off and going. It's going to finish whatever block I was on before I turn single block off. So this one I'm going to go feed hold, rewind, If you click go to work origin, it's going to take you to the X and Y origin point for your part. Just make sure that you actually move up in the Z axis first before you do that. I just told it to go to work origin, it would have cut through the part from the profile to the center part here just right now. So if you're going to go to work origin, go to jog first, move it up in the Z, get it to a clearance point, go back here, actually we'll, we'll jog it out. So 
but we'll say it stopped over there. Now if I go to work origin, it's going to go right to my X0, Y0, and I'm at a clearance area. Okay, again, the, uh, the spindle counterclockwise does not work. Our, our DC motor does not go counterclockwise. Jump in the line. It's at 20, just for the heck of it. Let's go uh, 32, start, run. Turns it off, it's moving in my Z. It's gonna go to the home position first, my, my machine home position in the Z. Turns on the spindle. Now it's moving in the X axis to where it would start for 32. Cycle start again, it's moving in the Y axis. And cycle start one more time, it's moving down in the Z axis. So it got down to the 150, minus 150, and now it's making its cut, taking off at line 32. And turn up the spindle. I'm going to touch on uh, conversational programming a little bit. For starts, the, the image you can see on the screen is, a, is a, the entire program. Uh, we're doing a facing operation, circular milling operation, profiling operation, and then uh, engraving our logo and such on the inside. What you need to take into consideration is where you want your X0, Y0 point to be for your conversational program. So because this is a symmetrical part, my X, Y0 is going to be dead center on the part. So if I want to do a conversational program, I click on F5, Conversation, and right now there's nothing up here. So my description, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to face off the top of the part. So I'm just going to punch in, face, I can put a date in there if I want to. Uh, the G-code program, I'm going to go face one, because this can be the first process I do. And then I click on the top line. If I double click on this, then these are my options. I've got face cut, profile cut, rectangular pocket, or circular pocket. So I'm going to pick face cut. Title up here is going to be face, face one. The tool, my tool for this one, if I, let me see what I've got. If I, I'll go to my tool data page right here. I'm going to use my 3 8 end mill to face with, so that's tool number two. I go back to the conversational program, so I can just put in tool number two. Spindle RPM, I'm cutting aluminum, it's a 3 8 carbide end mill. I'm going to go 2500 for my RPM, which is virtually as fast as it will go. Cutting feed rate, I'm going to put in uh, 8.0 inches per minute. Then I've got z-axis feed rate, because they're not center cutting, the z-axis speed has got to be slower going in. So I'm going to put a feed rate of 2.0 inches per minute. Z clearance, 50 thousandths above the part is fine, so 0 0.050. And tool diameter is 0.375. For my X start and XN and my Y start and YN, if I had a part where the blueprint was had a datum point and all the dimensions were taken over off of this bottom left corner to, to holes and other things on the print, then I would put my X0, Y0 point right here. And my start point for X would be zero here, and my end point would be whatever the width of my part is. So that cup holder's uh, 3.630 plus a quarter inch end mill around each one. So if I make, make my overall width on this uh, 4.3, that would probably be just about right, 4.4. Because I'm going with a datum point at the middle, my X start is going to be in the minus direction, so if I have 4.4 for my overall width, then my starting point here for X is going to be minus 2.2, and my finish point in X is going to be plus 2.2. My start in Y, it's a perfect square, so I'm going to start at my, my end in Y, rather, is going to be 2.2 in the positive direction my starting point is going to be minus 2.2. Right here I've got Z start point and Z end point and depth of cut. 
for my facing cut, I'm only going to take 20 thousandths off. So the starting point is going to be Z0. Finish point is going to be minus 0.02. And the depth of cut is going to be 20 thousandths. So I've, I've got all that information. I hit save. And it saves that right there. If this is all I want to do, then I'm going to go save wizard. And it wants to know what I want for a uh, file name. I'm just going to go face one, enter. If it likes my file name, it disappears. If I put in too many letters or I put a backslash or something it doesn't like, it's, it's not going to disappear. So if it doesn't disappear, you have to pick out a different name. So I'm going to hit save wizard and it says it's saved. Then I'm going to go post the G code and it will show when it's 100% posted. So right now, that's all it does is space. If I want to continue on with this program, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to double click. I'm going to pick out my next, my next operation. So I did a face cut. Uh, on this one, I would do the circular pocket. So I'm going to click on circular pocket, double click. And now I have all my pocket information. So I would go for my title, pocket two, the tool on this one is going to be the same tool, so tool number two, spindle RPM, we'll say 2,000. Cutting feed rate, because it's going to be a deeper cut, and I'm also going to have virtually a full diameter cut as it's going through the, the circular motion. My feed run here is going to be 5.0, 5 inches a minute. Feed rate in the Z is going to be 2 inches a minute again, 2.0. Uh, Z clearance, again, is going to be 50 thousandths and tool diameter 0.375. X center is gonna be zero, 0, 0.0. Diameter, I wanna go with, I'm gonna go with three and a quarter. Five. Y center is also zero, 0.0. 0. Start point on this one. Start's going to be Z0. Finish point, I'm going to go 200 thousandths. And I have to put minus in there. Minus 0.200. Depth of cut will go 0.100. So that's two passes, and we'll probably do a cleanup pass. So I'm going to go save. I'm going to save the wizard again. I'm going to post the G code. Then if I come out here, load program. I have face 1NC, load program, and that's what I've got. I've got my, my facing operation and my pocket operation. If I want to, right here it says face whiz, face 1 whiz, if I click on this, if I want to go in and alter anything, I can click on e any operation I have and alter it, or I can come down here and add another operation. We're going to double click here, and I would go to a profiling cut. Double click on profile, and again, you have title for the profile. The tool, this one, I would be using my quarter inch, which is tool number three. I go back to conversation, I would punch in tool number three, the RPM values, my start and finish point for my X and Y, profile start, X, uh, profile N, and you just punch in all the information again. So for right now, I'm just gonna hit cancel to get out of that. But anyhow, all of your, all of your different uh, conversational programs are all pretty straightforward. You just punch in the information you want and it generates all the G code for you. Mm -hmm.